What is going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I am a fifth year interventional radiology resident physician. So I just finished an absolutely grueling seven day straight stretch, and it is now Wednesday, which means it's my third day off. I'm on my seven on, seven off schedule still. So I had a brutal seven days, and now I'm trying to like kind of catch up on all the things that I didn't do during those brutal seven days. So I actually got called in a lot overnight this past week, and before that, I read a few comments saying that I didn't portray the real aspects of residency or the negative sides of residency. I'm too positive, I guess, I don't know. But regardless of how tired I was, I actually started filming in the middle of the night when I got called in and made a little video for you all. So you can't get any more real than that. And that video is going to come out probably this Saturday morning. Uh, so turn on post notifications. You will get notified when I post that video. Anyways, so on today's video, I'm going to first go get drug tested. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Also, I haven't been out of the house in a while, so it might be time we break these bad boys out. I haven't even opened these or worn them since my video, which is probably like two months ago, so let's go ahead and, this is hard. What do you say we break these guys in today? Because it's the first time out of my house in which I'm not going to work, so. Let's uh, break them in. So the real question is, which mask do I wear out? I have a few of these left over because we do a fit test every single year. And for some reason, they make you keep your N95 mask or throw them away. For some reason, I kept them and I have like three or four of them from over the years. So that's cool, but I don't like to wear these outside. I'll probably just wear a surgical mask. Not half bad. All right, so I have this smattering of surgical masks down here. So maybe I'll just put one of these on real quick. The sad part is that these are used, but what can you do at this time? What's funny is I literally wear these every single day, but for some reason wearing them outside in the public seems weird. Like I'm just getting out of my car and I put a mask on. I don't know, it's a little odd. Something to get used to, I guess. All right. Time to get drug tested. Well, it looks like they're not open today, even though their website says so. So you have to make an appointment now, apparently, because this whole COVID thing is making huge impacts on everything. So even though it says walk-ins welcome, I have to make an appointment now, which means I think the earliest appointment is later today or early tomorrow morning. So that's unfortunate. I didn't want to leave the house twice when I don't have to. Also, I probably didn't mention yet that this is kind of an essential thing I have to do. So some people will say, oh, why are you leaving your house to do a drug test? Well, so the way residencies and fellowships work is that they give you about, you know, 14 days, I think. They'll just send you a random email and say, you have 14 days to complete this drug test and you have to do it within that time. That way, if you are a drug taker, you don't have time to kind of plan out your <laughs> way to pass this test. Um, but the problem is I was working last week, I'm off this week, and I only have two days until that 14 day period expires. So I need to get this today or tomorrow. And if I don't, I don't know what the penalty is, but I just don't wanna mess with that, being as it's a new program and I just don't wanna start off on a bad foot. All right, so I found another location. Let's give this one a try. Let's hope it works. Okay, that literally took about four seconds. And might I add, <laughs> The lady who was doing it was pretty abrupt with me. She's like, grab the cup, pee here, sign here, put your stuff there, don't flush the toilet, you're done, see ya. I was like, okay. So that was exciting. Um, now I'm going back home and that's pretty much it. So I just got home from uh, going to the drug test. Uh, I didn't really talk about why I'm getting it. A little bit I touched on, but, so basically when you start a new residency or even when you're starting residency to begin with, 
and sometimes in med school, honestly, you have to get drug tested before you start. It's a, just a requirement. It's not specific to medicine. A lot of jobs require this. I think I also got drug tested when I started my corporate jobs that I used to work in before medicine as well. So it is definitely not unique to medicine. However, I will say the experience at these drug testing centers are very unique. Let's just say there's zero privacy at these places. So you walk in, they're very direct. Here's your cup, go wash your hands, go pee in the cup, come back, don't flush the toilet, and wait here. So basically, in front of everybody, you have to go pee in a cup, don't flush the toilet, and then just like carry your pee back to the uh, whoever's taking it. Um, and then they like mess with it, and then you sign a few things, and then they're like, okay, bye, and that's it. So it's a little awkward. So that's pretty much it. I know it was a super exciting day. And also I apologize for how long my hair is right now. My hair is like probably eight weeks in, no haircut. I usually get a haircut every two and a half to three weeks. Let me know in the comments below if you think Andriana should cut my hair or if I should trust her to cut my hair. Her mom or my mother-in-law is a hairstylist, but I don't think any of those traits pass down to Andriana, so let me know what you think. Maybe I'll let her cut my hair if it gets too long. Who knows? And on that note, so there are a lot of people who aren't working right now currently. So a lot of, you know, hairstylists, waiters and waitresses, stuff like that. And I think it's important if you actually still have your job to try to, you know, do your part to help out when you can. Maybe send your hairstylist a tip or go support your local businesses um, and order something, get gift cards or whatnot. Um, we try not to leave the house too much, maybe once or twice a week, like I said before. But lately, we've tried to order kind of curbside delivery at some of our favorite local restaurants. They even make cocktails to go, which you may have seen me post on my Instagram page. And, you know, help out your hairstylist too. I mean, it's hard for a lot of folks out there, and I think we need to all do our part and kind of like pitch in and help everybody out. Little things go a long way in... Uh, hard times like we're experiencing right now. So on that note, I also wanted to take this time and thank you all because we finally reached 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I actually started my page because of two people. One of them is Antonio Webb MD, which you may have seen his page. He has a huge medical YouTube page, which I will link right here or down below. He actually reached out to me because I had a pretty big Instagram following at the time. That was kind of my thing. He reached out to me to do a day in the life of an interventional radiology resident video, in which he basically just followed me around on a diagnostic call shift. I did that, I sent it to him, he posted it, and it did extremely well on his channel. And I basically realized that maybe I should just do this on my own channel. If it gets 100,000 views on someone else's channel, why don't I just do this on mine? And then also, my good friend Daniel Choi, SpineDocNY on Instagram, he also told me to start vlogging probably like a year and a half, two years ago, because he felt like I would be good at it. Until finally, once all those things kind of fell in place, I started my own channel. So here we are today with 100,000 subscribers. This is like, I think I started in September, October 2018. So about a year and a half, a little over a year to get 100,000 subscribers. I used to only post one video a week, but I've started to kind of up my game recently. So whenever I have time, I'm just posting videos. So I genuinely just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, because literally this channel would be nothing without you all. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you all still keep watching because I will continue to crank out the videos as long as you all keep watching. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a video on a specific topic. I know I've heard you loud and clear about this mouse. You want me to do a whole video devoted to this mouse that I love so much. And I also may start trying to incorporate more like medical technology stuff into the channel because after all, interventional radiology is the most technologically advanced field in medicine or one of the most. And we have some pretty cool stuff. Also medical technology is advancing so much every single day. So. It's kind of a niche topic. I might start incorporating that to a few videos. So if you want me to discuss more cool, like medical electronic things that come out, let me know in the comments below as well. Otherwise, make sure you smash the like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. 
Turn on those post notifications so you are notified when I post a new video, which is usually about once or twice, or sometimes three times, every single week. And if you have those post notifications on, you will know when I post that call, real life call video I'm doing this weekend. So look out for that. Also, thank you all so much for 100,000 subscribers, and I'll see you all on the next video.